Hey, Jay here. Today we're going to talk about tools for dirt bikes. I'm going to try to help you out, especially for those guys that are new or newer to dirt bikes. I'm going to give you some of the tools that we use the most and try to help you out. Okay, so I've been building up tools for 40 years plus range, and it takes a long time to build up a lot of really good tools and to have tools to help you with a lot of that uh, working on dirt bikes. Now, there are options now with companies like Boxo. We have a few pictures here of some of the kits that we've used. Okay, so with these Boxo kits, they set them up so that you have the standard quarter and three eighths ratchets with most of all the sockets, Allen wrenches, Torx bits, also a few tire spoons, tire gauge, spoke wrench, breaker bar. And in the next drawer here, you can see you got you know tape measure, knife, wrenches up to 27, screwdrivers, so a kit like this can get you a really good start and a kit like this can do 80 to 90 percent of most of your basic bike maintenance when you wash your bike your basic bike prep and then for what you would need at the track or the trail okay so for us we're kind of the next level as far as working on bikes uh, project bikes builds helping uh, people and over the years have grown to need a lot more tools than maybe what would come standard and just a kit like what you see there. But that's a great kit. And also, if you're gonna use Boxo, you can use our code DBTV1. If you're gonna purchase anything like that, that'll help you out a little bit. Okay, so one of my approaches on tools, especially if you're younger, is you don't have to go all in. You can work your way up, just like, with, like I said with that kit. Uh, those kits, like Boxo has, that's a three drawer filled, and they have two drawers that are empty, so you could add your own tools. All right, so now I'm gonna get into a lot of the most common tools I use on dirt bikes, not on other things, you know, trucks or cars or anything else, but on dirt bikes. Hammer time. Like in that kit, you saw it had a small hammer. With dirt bikes, you don't want to use a steel hammer like this, which this is a great hammer for many uses, and we'll talk about that. But you don't want to use a hammer like this on a steel, like on an axle or a bolt or a nut on a dirt bike because it will round it off and mushroom it off. And so this is the kind of steel hammer that we like, ball peen hammer right there. I like this hammer a lot and we'll use it for a lot of good uses. We can use a hammer like this if we're trying to knock something out, you know, steering stem races, bearings, using a punch, anything like that would be great for this hammer. Dead blow hammers are plastic or rubbery here and you can see how beat up this one is. Most of these are all you know, well over 15 or, or 30 years old, these, these dead blows. And inside, this one right here, you can really hear it. It's got a bunch of like sand in there. And that weight will give a dead blow when it hits. This is what you want to use, like if you're going to hit an axle, anything like that on your bike, use a dead blow hammer. And you can get these. You don't have to get a snap on one or whatever. You can get them at Harbor Freight. Uh, good quality will last plenty long enough and pretty cheap. Okay, T-handles. T-handles are pretty inexpensive from Motion Pro or from Tusk. Any of those companies have good uh, T-handles. It's pretty quick and easy. A lot of hardcore older mechanics don't like T-handles uh, because it gets away from the traditional socket uh, setup. Um, I kind of like T-handles just because it's a lot easier. There are places where you shouldn't be using them, but all around the bike, pulling the seat off, pulling the tank off, the plastics, really helpful and I really like uh, using a good t-handle and they come in sets and usually from 8 up to 19 millimeters would be the sets that I would get and you'd want to keep the 13 millimeter and make sure it has 13s in there because that'll fit all the Austria bikes in the old days we used to toss out the 13 millimeters now we keep them wrenches okay good quality wrenches and good quality tools these snap-on wrenches and tools I've had for uh, 25 years range uh, these these uh, wrenches last a long time. They are very expensive. There's good quality stuff out there now that's not nearly as expensive that you could go with. You want to start with six millimeter all the way up to 32 is the best sizes to have. And there are many sizes you don't need. And I'm going to tell you the sizes that we skip. It's really interesting. The first time when I started buying these, my uh, mechanic buddy who sold Snap-on, who knew dirt bikes, says you'll never need these sizes. And we just skipped them and it's fine. From six seven millimeter, eight, we skip nine, we go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 is used rarely. We'll use it on some tools and different things. 17, 19, 21, 22, 24, 27, 29, 30, and 32. Those are the sizes we use. We skip those sizes in between. Now, many kits you buy will have those and that's fine. I like to have wrenches for sure 
for the front axle and rear axle nut of the bikes that we work on. On the main bikes we work on, I'll even set up a ratchet with a socket that we just leave on there all the time. This is a 32 millimeter. This does most of the bikes that we work on rear axle. We always have this set up because we're doing it so often. A nice 3 8 ratchet is critical. This would be the most common thing I would use in metric sizes again. That's all we're dealing with with the dirt bikes. Uh, from 8 up to 19 in those ranges would be the main sizes for the 3 8 drive. The quarter inch drive, the smaller one, we'd go down to 6 millimeter and come up to say 12 millimeter range. Okay, so half inch drive sockets have the larger half inch where they hook in here. And with those, most of those, I wouldn't start until you're, you know, 12 would be the smallest and working your way up to 32. And with those same sizes we did on the wrenches, same sizes up to 32 would get you most everything you'd ever need. And that's half inch is what we'd use on our air gun as well. Okay, this is a hand impact. And this is what I talked about. I would hit with our regular steel ball peen hammer. And this is going to be very helpful on loosening. You're going to use it on Allen bolts and also on Phillips heads like this. You'll use it on this. And it, this one right here has a 3 8 right here. And you pull it off and you have a half inch right here. That's what's really nice about a tool like this is you have both those options. And this is a really good one. This one's well over 25 years old and still works perfectly. Okay, this is a 3 8 drive torque wrench. This is a snap-on one. This is an old school one. This, again, this one's over 20 years old as well, with, as with a lot of my tools. This one works really well, and we've had it checked out over the years to make sure it's still calibrated well, and it does. On a dirt bike, most everything you would need would be fine with this, with this style 3 8 drive. You can torque nearly everything you would need to on the bike with this type of torque wrench. The main thing you're going to be torquing regularly is your fork bolts, some of those head stays, different things that are a little bit more critical. Okay, next is a multimeter. Uh, these are very inexpensive. This one's a high dollar one, but they're very inexpensive now. You can get a 20 to $30 one and you can get a multimeter and then you could quickly just be able to test your battery, for instance, to make sure what voltage it has. So you're not chasing yourself wondering if the battery's good. And even if you're not much of an electrician like myself, you can kind of Google and learn about anything in any way to use this to help you be able to check things on your bike. Okay, so this isn't quite a tool. It's a helper is magnet trays. These are really inexpensive now, and these are nice to have because when you're working on your bike, and especially if you're not going to finish it that day, you can throw your bolts and stuff in here and keep it organized. We'll even write with a Sharpie inside here what bike it is because we're working on multiple bikes at a time. We'll just write in here. It says KX250 or whatever. We'll have it right here. Having trays like this for the bikes, and you can get a whole set of these for $20 or $30 now. Uh, with a bunch of different sizes. Uh, it's a really good investment. Razor blades or a knife. I like these old school razor blades. We use them in all types of places. And if you look around my shop, I'll have them stationed in all different areas. They can sit on a magnet or they just sit in the wood right behind in our counter. Having these around, I'm always finding something I can use them on easily. Pliers and cutters. I keep all these in the same drawer. As you can see, our drawer is pretty full. That's years of building up and we have a, a lot of variety, but there's some main ones we use a lot, and I'll talk about why. Okay, first would just be a regular strong cutters uh, or wire cutters that it can just really cut into a cable or wire, really nice and easy. Those are really nice to have. Basic pliers I call like this that have two positions and will be a gap there, or you can open it up and you're at zero, just like so. Use those a lot, those a lot. Some needle nose like this, I mainly would use these more for grabbing a part than actually holding it. Maybe something got dropped. I can use little needle nose or nice and kits. Same goes for long ones is these long reach ones. And this, this handle I, will help me be able to reach in to, to a place that you might not think would be as easy. This is a custom pliers from Motion Pro. And you can see they're offset right here because these are master link pliers. Not a must, but they're really cool when putting a master link on. That little step makes it a whole lot easier to just set that master link clip really a lot better deal. These are what we call flush cut. These are for zip ties. I like to use them on zip ties because this backside is totally flush. So when you cut the zip tie, you can go right to the head and snip it and it won't leave that sharp edge that'll cut your arm or your hand when you're in there working. So it's a pet peeve of mine to cut your zip ties off right there with the flush cuts. Adjustable pliers like this are really nice and I use these you know, quite often because here I can get a better grip on something like this. I stay away from using vice grips as much as possible. I try not to be in situations that would require vice grip. Uh, wire tie pli pliers where you will actually lock in and you can pull your wire uh, like so. 
not critical if you're beginning and there's probably not a ton of things we use this on if we're not wired tiring grips on since we use lock-ons from ODI. Really cool is something like this, pretty inexpensive. If you're cutting hose, having uh, these types of cutters, it's really cool. Works better than just using something like this. It leaves a nice clean cut and I think a little bit better than scissors because it's just kind of made for hose, really good and accurate. The next for electrical is just a wire stripper. Uh, we don't do a ton of electrical work, but say we're putting an hour meter on or something, we want to strip the outside. It just hooks right in on the right number. Pretty cool little tool. Something like that's nice to have. Okay, screwdrivers. You got your regular flat blade uh, screwdriver or like a Phillips. In the Phillips family, there's also this uh, JIS, is Japanese Industrial Standard. We, you can buy these online, pretty inexpensive. And these do a lot better job of like the kill switches those little screws so they don't get rounded off because they fit it a lot better than your typical uh, Phillips screwdriver will. So having a good set of screwdrivers is, is really nice and different lengths and different uh, thicknesses because they will fit your uh, bolt head, your screw head a lot better. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of dive into a little bit more of the specialty tools for dirt bikes uh, that are a little bit more specialized. I'm gonna start talking about my buddy Brad who does a lot of our engine work he specializes in having, his, his box is a lot of boxo parts and Craftsman and Snap-on these built up over the years. And he specializes in just engines. So he has pullers, um, stud installers and removers for studs. He has specialty tools like that that are gonna be really critical to engine building. So, and that goes for the same for when you're working on suspension. If you're gonna get into working on suspension, you're gonna need to get the cap tools, the seal drivers, bullet tools, all those types of tools you'll need to be looking at that. But for right now, I would say just take your suspension off, take it to a buddy to do until you build up those tools. One of my absolutely favorite tools is our brake bleeder. This is a Vacula one. It's probably getting to the range of close to 20 years old. And it was like 350 bucks when I bought it. So it was pretty dang expensive when I bought it, but it is still around. It's still here, works amazing. And it's fed by air right here. And if you see any of our brake uh, bleeding videos, this tool is just really helpful. Now we do a lot more bikes than the average person does, but if you're gonna be flushing your brakes, you have multiple bikes, you're helping other people, it's a great tool to invest in. Also, since this tool's come out, there's plenty of uh, good ones now available like on Amazon. If you hit our link in our Google Doc, we have a link to that one. It's like $85 for a pretty good one that works really well. Here's another one of my also favorite tools. This is from Motion Pro PBR. This isn't Pro Bull Riders, this is Press Brake Rivet. So it'll press your master link on, it, it can break a chain, it can also rivet a chain. And we've done all these, with, and this tool is really old, as you can see its case. It works really well, really love this tool, pretty uh, nice to have. If you're gonna be doing it, especially if you're doing any type of O-ring chains, this really help, is really helpful. Okay, this is something that we use almost every day. We're in this shop, I call them Pokemons because they poke you. So uh, little dowels or scribes that you can just dig and poke stuff. And they're very inexpensive to buy nowadays. This is a Tusk one. You can hit our link to be able to check those out. Uh, really nice to have around the shop because you can use them in so many different ways. We're always using Allen wrenches, whether it's putting sprockets on wheels, different things like that. So we leave all the main sizes of Allen wrenches set up like this. I have a large one that I think is like seven, eight, no, six, eight, ten, something like that anyway. And then four, five, six, we have on one as well. We keep these on these Ys. I haven't been able to find these in a while. ASV made these, um, again, over well over 20 years old, like everything around here. So uh, this is really cool to have something like this set up. Along that same note, we leave this T-handle, it's like a Motion Pro T-handle with a 3 8 drive. We leave this T-handle set up with a T45 on here. We call it the KTM tool because KTM is the only one that has this T45 for their subframes. So we leave this set up hanging on our wall all the time. Next would be tire changing tools. So if you're gonna step up to the next level, if you've seen our tire changing videos, or if you haven't, I would say recommend going and checking them out. And if you're gonna work your way up to changing tires, it's good you have good tools. Number one would be our tire stand. And if you need the drawings to the tire stand, email us and you, hopefully you can get someone to help you build one. But having a good tire stand that's good and heavy and strong will be very helpful. So if you have a good tire stand, then just the tools, the rest of the tools are not that difficult. It's some spoons, which Motion Pro has these style spoons. And I have them in all of our links. 
on our uh, docs if you email us if you have any problem. But you need to, and you need three is all you'd really need to be able to do a good job. A bead buddy also from Motion Pro. A good tire gauge. Motion Pro is nice. A valve core tool takes the core. You can let air out and also take the core all the way out. You can get this like from Napa or other auto parts store uh, under $10, pretty inexpensive. And then I like to have a ratcheting wrench, uh, 10, 12, and some are 13, but most, most bikes are 12 millimeter is the size for the rim lock. And so having this ratcheting uh, wrench for the rim lock is really helpful. Now this isn't a tool we use a lot because we don't change a lot of front sprockets, but we do it, you know, a few a year. And this is one of the coolest tools out there. It's from uh, sprocketstuff.com. Handmade, very small, it's not distributed uh, very well, uh, but really cool tool. And it's set right here by just changing this, these two bolts, you can change it to 13, 14, 15, different size front sprockets. If you're gonna be changing front sprockets at all, and it's a pretty inexpensive tool. Here in California, I get them from ECC, and I think even Rocky Mountain has had these in, in the past. I'm not sure if they have been stocked right now, but a really cool tool from Sprocket Stuff. Okay, air tools. Now, I know not everyone has the money to have a full air compressor um, and run a lot of air tools. Um, we, you can do 90 plus percent of everything on dirt bikes without air tools, with hand impacts and so forth. But as far as air, one of the first things it's mainly useful for that we use the most often is with an air chuck like this, we'll be blowing off the bikes after we wash them. We have really good videos and showing you all the step-by-step -step on washing your bike and what's best. But blowing the bike off and prepping the bike is almost more important and that of a step than the actual physically power washing of it. Air chucks like this is what I use when we're doing their tire changing. So we'll have uh, air chucks. This one's from Motion Pro or just this little basic one. An air chuck like that would be really helpful when you're filling up your tires. And then a couple tools that we would use a lot would be our impact. This would be more if we're getting into the engine. We'll have to loosen like, you know, primary nuts, things like that. We'll be able to use an impact on. And then when we're buffing stuff off, like say swing arm or something we're going to get prepped after. Um, this little banjo thing works really well with sanding pads and different scotch bright pads. Uh, this cutoff wheel, I'll grind a lot of things with this. You gotta be very careful with this, wear glasses, pay attention. Uh, on something like this, I'll put little scotch bright wheels on here and we can actually be buffing like on little parts, maybe before they get vapor blasted. So those are some kind of cool look at some tools. Most of stuff's pretty inexpensive and if you're not using it a lot, you don't have to get the full on snap on. You can probably look at getting something at Harbor Freight and it's gonna last you plenty. Uh, for just working on dirt bikes, you're not using it every day, that can be really helpful. Sag, okay, on dirt bikes, you wanna check the rear sag of the bike. That's how much the spring is collapsed with a rider sitting on it, so rider sag. And so you can do that just with a simple tape measure, metric tape measure, find you some marks. There's good videos out there showing you how to check sag. Um, if you get a little more advanced, you can also get a gauge, like something like this will go into the rear axle and it can hold there and you can actually find, you set you zero at a mark on your fender you can be able to set sag with something like this. Next level is something like this, a digital readout one that'll, it's a magnet. It'll stick to the, re the rear axle. Then you can bring it up and you have to have a little hole drilled in your fender or this company also, this company Motul also has a little stick on clips. And you could do that if you wanna drill into your fender, you can do that. So check and sag, another kind of specialty item, but those are three different ways you can do it snap rings so if you're going to get internal on the bike things like this can be uh something you'll really need little clips they have little snap rings and little two little holes to go in and they'll be whether it's external or uh, you'll be moving you can rotate these things to open either direction so having a good set of these is really helpful they sell some that have bits that can be changed to fit different things i've typically found those don't hold up very well um, they're not strong enough on most clips. So something like this would be used on, let's say, wheel bearings. Some uh, wheel hubs would have snap rings in there that you might need something like this. Okay, this is what I call power tools, but with, that are very small, battery operated, and they've progressed a long way. This one's a lot, uh, pretty old. I'd say around 15 years old, and I haven't been able to find another one since. I really like it. Porter cable, it's not available any longer. What's nice about these is they have this little quick release right here. Now, when you're using a tool like this, you wanna be careful. I tell people to mainly use it to take bolts off the bike. If uh, it's too easy to strip something out, if you're not qualified and experienced, using one of these, 
to put them in. So we do use them sometimes uh, in videos. You'll see this is a little bit newer thing. This one's a little bit stronger. And uh, this one, uh, again, I would be very cautious on going in, especially at full force on something. So, but they're really helpful if you're stripping down a bike. I really like having these around. Uh, it, it is a lot quicker. So like on this one with these quick release bits, that's a, these are from Motion Pro, that's an eight, and then you can just swap on a 10 that quick. So you can just go boom, boom, and put the 10 one in. That's what's kind of nice about having something like that. Okay, pipe spring pullers. There's real simple ones available, and also Motion Pro has kind of the Mac daddy of spring pullers now. It actually comes apart here and will kind of bend, and you can kind of manipulate it, and it works really well. Kind of heavy duty, strong one, uh, but even this works just fine for most use. All two strokes have them, many four strokes have them, where you're gonna be pulling pipe springs. It's a whole lot easier to use something like this than a pair of vice grips or something. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about 12 point, six point uh, differences in wrenches and sockets here. This goes for sockets as well. A six point just has six this, you know, areas here. This is a lot safer to use. If you can use it, if, especially if it's really tight, you wanna use a six point on whatever you're working on because it's less likely to round it off. With a 12 point, you see all those little grooves? It, it can be a lot more apt to get worn in and to, to round it off. But with a 12 point, you can make quicker little grabs. So it gives you some advantages there as well. Okay, then a wrench like this works really well. It's a line wrench. I call it a crow's foot, has an opening here. Something like this is nice because, especially like on sprocket bolts, it can get in there and hold it. You're kind of getting that six point good holding, but you can get it in there in, in an area that you might not be able to normally. I call these nut drivers. What's nice about these, this is a, there's a six, eight, 10 and 12. I mainly use these sizes right here and the six and eight I use a lot. What's nice about these is rather than having a T handle on your hand, if you're struggling with plastic about getting something started, this is a way better way to go. And these are nice snap on ones I've had for a long time. Also, there's cheaper sets that you can use that work uh, just fine. And you can, you can have a lot more control trying to get something started. Sometimes on plastic on a dirt bike, getting a shroud started or something can be difficult to do. And if you have a T handle, it can be a little awkward. Here, you're starting it straight. Uh, I really like using a nut driver in a lot of cases, especially fork guard bolts down there, uh, shrouds. Those are types of places that I would like to use this uh, under the front fender. I would use this to get it started before I would tighten it up with something else. Torch, also a heat gun is helpful for, you know, putting on graphics things. A torch is really nice when bolts, say like a front rotor bolt or a rear rotor bolt, when those bolts are locked tight, they're thread locked in tight, you wanna hit these and you wanna melt that thread locker down. Then you can get in there and loosen it a lot easier. So having a torch is really helpful in a lot of cases. Things that are stuck, uh, heating up a frame to put swing, you know, some stem bearings in, you're gonna to wanna to heat it up first before you put in those bearings. So having a good torch is really helpful. Okay, having ratio rights, things like this to be able to measure accurately, whether you're putting your oil in your bike, we have beakers as well that when we measure oil, but when we're doing two stroke oil, it's nice to be able to just look here and see our ounces poured in. Um, funnels, this is a fancy funnel. You don't have to have fancy funnels. This one threads into the hole from AK Technologies. You don't have to have that. You can just have regular funnels, but having a few different funnels, uh, which we have a bunch of, we keep them in our oil bucket so keep, they, and then clean them out before we ever put them back in the bike. The uh, beaker one we use a lot. This one goes up to a thousand. And then, but we can also real easily, I measure up and I can put 1100 to 1150 in here on, on one fill, which is really nice to be able to do. Uh, so something like that, when I'm putting oil into say a four stroke, it works out really nice. It's nice now that I have to do the math and worry about, oh, did I add in, if I put in 500 out of here to go back and put in the other three or 400 that's supposed to go in, getting in one shot, where the big one is a lot safer and easier. Cool little kind of more hardware-ish items are scissors. Spencer got me these really cool scissors for Christmas or something uh, years, years back and they are awesome. Heavy duty, gnarly scissors. They come in real good hand uh, to be able to use around the shop. Files, round file, regular file. As you can see, this one's getting plenty of use here. Those types of things will help you out and it's a good thing to have in your box. There's always gonna be something you have to do, a little custom fitting, and that should help. Okay, so now we're kind of wrapping up here. We've gone over a lot of tools. There's a lot of different things you can get and work towards. Um, and then once you kind of get all those basic tools, then there's an, kind of an endless supply of motorcycle, dirt bike specific tools that like Motion Pro has. Um, 
blind bearing remover. Really cool tool because it has a slide hammer like this. And what this thing will do, like on wheel bearings and many other inside the cases, there's different places where they make this thing, this little lip right here, just right to where it catches that lip and you can tighten it up and then slide hammer it out. It works really well. Like I'm surprised at how well it works. I just use it on some wheel bearings. Uh, the, I've done a few of them that last little bit and uh, works really well. Um, different drivers for different sizes when you're doing linkage to knock things out. You can see how beat up our uh, steering uh, stem bearing installer is. This is for the races that go into the frame. We use that thing a ton over the years. It's, it's pretty beat. This is a new tool they have that removes dowel pins out of cases and things. You tighten it up. And again, it has a little slide hammer as well. So you have this little tool right here, slide up and knock it out. Works really well. Also, they have tools like this that will help you take apart and install in your linkage into your uh, swing arm. Swing arm or linkage pieces, you can use this if you don't have a press. You can use the threaded pieces to dial it in. You have a lot more control. It can be easier for guys uh, to maybe not mess up with something like this. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. We didn't hit every tool I have, and I didn't talk about tools that you would have in your tool bag or tool box that's in your truck that you're taking to the track or, or to your trail ride. That's a whole nother story and uh, lots of things to go on there. But building up your shop toolbox is, to me, uh, a long-term commitment to a lifetime of fun of working on the dirt bikes that you love. So when, you know, when I work on dirt bikes, I'm thinking about riding them a lot, but I enjoy actually working on them. And most of my friends do as well. Um, and setting up your shop in a good way can really be helpful as well. We have a good video on that and setting up the shop, but we have airlines run all over. We have good lighting. Uh, all those things help in having your shop set up. And even when I was younger and didn't have uh, the space or the money, I remember having a nice little bike size work area that I had carpet down in, it had enough for a bike and toolbox on a bench that kind of was just a two by fours made up uh, of a bench and had a box up there. So if, if as long as you can organize yourself and whatever space you have to work with, that can be very helpful. So hopefully you enjoyed and learned a few things to help you build up your Moto Toolbox. If you, remember, if you have questions, feel free to email us, like, comment, subscribe, and all that cool stuff. And hopefully we'll see you out in the track or trail soon. Know where you're going with the number one GPS app accessing 500,000 miles of trails and roads, open dates and public lands. Plan your routes before you head out with the new state-of-the-art route builder. The Elite version even shows landowners and property boundaries. Download the Onyx off-road app today for a free seven-day trial. Also, to save 20%, use the discount code DBTV1.